What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. In today's video, we'll be going over a task three speaking question, which can be found at zabinexam.com under TPO number four. That's the reading passage. So the topic today is nonverbal languages. Let's look at the reading passage, the first sentence. Nonverbal language, you, you notice that there is no S, right? So nonverbal language singular, which makes the verb become refers. But since the topic is nonverbal languages, I'm going to encourage you to change refers to refer so that it agrees with the plural subject of the sentence. Okay, so nonverbal languages refer to human emotional expressions without involving verbal statements. Thank you very much. That's the definition right here. Nonverbal languages, which refer to human emotional expressions without involving verbal statements. We're done with the reading passage because we have the definition. Thank goodness that the first sentence gave it to us in a way that we can just copy and paste. Now, if you understood fully what nonverbal languages mean from the first sentence that we just read, then that's where you, you can just take your eyes off the reading passage. You don't have to look at the words anymore. However, if by any chance you didn't understand fully, then that's when you would use the extra seconds that you have left over to try to understand what the concept is before the lecture presents itself. Because if you have some background knowledge, some background information, then when you listen to the content of the lecture, you're going to be able to associate your personal experiences with the content that's being given, which will definitely bolster your understanding. So there are so many upsides to being able to figure out where the definition is given to us very quickly and to write it down in a matter of seconds and to have a lot of seconds left. The main advantages are number one, you're going to feel very prepared. You're going to have, chan have a chance to rehearse that sentence, the ending sentence several times before the 45 seconds are up. And number two, you're going to be able to kind of um, unknowingly, inadvertently predict and expect the content of the lecture. All right. Okay. So anyways, let's go ahead and listen to what the professor has to say. Last month, my favorite uncle paid me a surprise visit. I hadn't seen him in many years. The doorbell rang, I opened the door, and there was Uncle Pete. Now, I'm sure when I saw him, I said something like, Uncle Pete, what a surprise! How nice to see you! Anyway, my wife was standing next to me, and according to her, I wasn't really aware of this, my eyes got really wide, and I broke into a huge big smile. She said I was actually jumping up and down like a little boy. Well, anyway, later that evening, Uncle Pete told me how very, very good he felt when he saw how happy I was to see him. But compare that with this. My daughter, she's six, we were building a birdhouse together last week, and I was showing her how to use a hammer and nail. And of course, stupid me, I wasn't being very careful, and I smashed my thumb with the hammer. Boy, did it hurt. I almost felt like screaming, but I didn't want to upset my daughter, so I said, don't worry, honey, it's nothing. Meanwhile, I was shaking my hand as if that would stop my thumb from hurting, and my face was contorted in pain. My voice was trembling, too. So even though I told my daughter I was okay, I'm sure she didn't believe me, because she kept asking me if I was okay. Explain how the examples from the professor's lecture Illustrate the relationship between verbal and nonverbal communication. All right, so in this lecture, the professor gave us two personal experiences. So we're just going to understand that as two examples, which should help you realize how to say the beginning and ending sentences, which means that your first impression and last impressions are going to be stable. All right, so since that's taken care of, let's focus on the uh, middle section of our response, the core, the, the meat, and uh, figure out how we're going to summarize the details. Okay, so after the introduction, the beginning sentence, we're going to say, to begin with, last month, the professor's favorite uncle paid him a visit. Pay someone a visit means to visit someone. It's just a idiomatic way of saying visit someone, okay? Paid him a visit. You can say paid him a surprise visit if you would like. When the professor saw him, he thought he just said, how nice to see you. Now, don't make a mistake and say how nice to meet you, because if you change see to meet, you're implying that the professor is meeting his favorite uncle for the first time that day. And that makes no sense whatsoever. OK, so how nice to see you. However, his wife said 
that he was actually jumping up and down like a little boy while saying those words. So, his uncle was actually really happy to see him behave that way or respond that way. Okay, so that's what happened here. The professor's verbal message was plain and simple. How nice to see you again. But his non-verbal language was quite special because he couldn't hide his excitement and, and he was jumping up and down like a boy. Okay, now the second example. In addition to this, the professor showed his young daughter how to use a hammer and nail. You, you can choose to try and mention while building a birdhouse last week, but you don't really have to do that. Now, since I already said however in this part right here, I'm going to say on the other hand, or but. But he accidentally smashed his thumb with the hammer. Now, I'm not going to add a conjunction here because I'm going to say something like yet or nevertheless right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, the professor didn't scream and said, don't worry to his daughter. Nonetheless, his daughter didn't believe him because his face was in a lot of pain. So in this exp example right here, the professor's verbal message was um, supposed to be something that's really calm, something that kind of alleviates the situation and, and helps to soothe um, someone's panic. But his nonverbal communication message was of certain, certain panic and much pain. So his daughter picked up on that and didn't believe a single word he said. All right, now, this lecture, I believe, wasn't too challenging or difficult to understand because nonverbal messages, body language, are things that we just notice unconsciously. We just take those into account when we're having conversations. So this is a concept and topic that we are really familiar with. And if that's the case, then you can bet that more people would have done better than they would have done worse because it's a concept and topic that's familiar to most people. All right, now that we have listened to how I'm gonna put those details together, let's see how it works out within the one minute time frame that we are given. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a couple of different examples to explain the concept of nonverbal languages. To begin with, last month, the professor's favorite uncle paid him a visit. When the professor saw him, he thought he just said, how nice to see you. But his wife said that he was actually jumping up and down like a little boy. Therefore, the professor's uncle was really happy to see him respond that way. In addition to this, the professor showed his daughter how to use a hammer and nail in the past, yet he accidentally smashed his thumb with the hammer. The professor didn't scream and said don't worry when this happened. Nonetheless, his daughter didn't believe him because his face was in a lot of pain. To sum up, these were two perfect examples of nonverbal languages, which refer to human emotional expressions without involving verbal statements, given by the professor in the lecture. All right. Now, I planned on saying however, but, or nonetheless over here, but clearly that changed. I ended up saying but, however, and nonetheless. What I'm saying is you got to have your own cycle and rotation of those commonly used conjunctions. You don't want to be one of those people who get stuck because you run out of synonyms for those conjunctions, which you're going to be using to put together your information, okay? It's so important to use those conjunctions because they prepare the listener for what's going to be coming up next. And then if that happens, no matter how many grammar mistakes you're making or how many poor word choices you're making, the conjunction itself is going to still be there. And if it's used properly, it's going to help the listener kind of put the missing pieces together or put the disorganized pieces in the right place. So please work on using the proper conjunctions please, in your speech and your essay. All right, all right, that just about wraps up today's video. If you guys enjoyed what you heard, experienced, and saw, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share the content, but most importantly, if you are a self-disciplined and dedicated person, reach out to me about my tutoring services. Let's get the score that you need and deserve in 2020 when everything gets back to normal. Peace.